EMDSD 14R and this is New Trains Part 33. That's right, you're now looking at New Trains Part 33. I wasn't expecting to make a New Trains installment for a while, but um, God blessed me with some bonus money and um, I went and bought some stuff off of eBay and a few other places. Uh, and, you know, I'm here to show that to you guys today. Now, I know you guys are looking at this and you're saying, oh my God, you have the Vermonter baggage car. Yes, um, there is a guy that is actually making these. His name is Mike. Um, and this is actually the first one that he actually made uh, that was for sale. This started out as a standard Walther's uh, Santa Fe baggage car. And he basically decaled it with microscale decals. And I saw it and... I I bought it. I actually saw this on Facebook like the like the night he posted the picture of it. I bought it the next day. And he even wrote me a note right here. So thanks Mike for uh for sending the car. It's awesome. I put KD couplers on it even though it had the proto couplers it needed a KD undershank couplers. And then this is my first Walther's uh, large window coach. I got this from Nicholas Smith. Um, I believe it was Friday. Yeah, Friday. And it's got Katie Longshank couplers on it. It's from their train line series, I think. Mainline series. I'm sorry. Mainline series. So let me move the train down. And then these two cars also came from Nicholas Smith. I'm not sure which railroad these are for. I'm not sure if it's SNCF. I'm not even sure. Um, but it looks like they're baggage cars, but they're also generator cars. They're definitely Lima. I know that. Um, I did put the I put the Katie Longshank couplers on them and everything, and I had to get them because they were nice. So um, very unique. I do have some European passenger cars. I need to get a few more. And then also from Nicholas Smith, I got this Union Pacific box car. It looks really cool. And I like it. And then this car, I'm not sure who made this car, but it's it's a three bay hopper. Um, as you can see, it's for the seaboard. I put KD couplers on it. But if you look at the underside, and the whole car is metal, like everything's metal, the, the sides, the frame, everything. And I don't know why my camera just went yellow like that, but anyway, um, it's the doors are spring-loaded. So I guess if you had like a magnet or something, it would actually automatically open the car. And I was a little skeptical at buying it at first. I was like, eh, should I buy it? Should I not buy it? I said, why not? It's really durable and, you know, one of a kind that I've seen. Um, and then, besides that, um, let me just bring this around here. Now, you guys have seen my TGV train before, but there's probably something different about it. You guys might notice. Yep, I got another car. This came from a guy in the U.S. Um, now, the end cars and the engines, those are from Lima Joe F. The central car is Joe F. And when I bought this car, the the actual the the center couplings are actually different between the Lima Joe F. and the Joe F car. Now, this is for the TGV Atlantique. Not for the TGV duplex, like I showed in my previous my video from oh, who knows how long ago. But the couplings on these are different. The way that these are set up, the Joe F cars, I believe, are designed to intermix with the uh, Macano, or I'm not pronouncing the name right, TGV uh, sets. But um, they still connect to the, the uh, you know, they still can be used with the Lima cars if you modify the coupling. Um, it actually comes in a box like this. This is what the car comes in. Which is really nice. 
This is brand spanking new, by the way. It was never opened, never used. Brand spanking new. Now, you can obviously tell that this is the Joe F car because it's got a lighter green than the Lima car. Not only that, but the windows aren't tinted. These are tinted. Um, another thing, if you look closely, the Lima undercarriage is actually more detailed than the, or the Joe F, I'm sorry, the Joe F car is actually more detailed than the uh, Lima car, if you can see that there. Now you're probably wondering, okay, is that the only car you got? No, I got three more cars coming. I got a, I got two first class coaches, and then I got the bar car. So then I'll have six passenger cars and two engines for my Atlantique set. Which, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, is extremely hard to get. It's extremely hard to find the intermediate cars. You're more likely to find the end cars and the engines than than anything. And the the Joe F the Joe F ones, especially the Joe F sets, they're more common than the Lima Joe S. Although, if I'm not mistaken, in my previous video around Christmas time, which is around that time. A lot of TGV Limas, a lot of TGV Joe F sets pop up. And I'm talking about the higher quality ones with the metal pantographs like this set. There's a lot of them popping up right now. So I'm keeping my eyes open for that stuff. Uh, another thing that I got, also from Nicholas Smith. And this is the Ryko edition. Another Ryko. There's the number. It's a museum edition electric and let me show you guys now this has been sitting on the shelf at nicholas smith for years i i remember seeing this thing sitting on the shelf three three years ago or so that's it right there i already put katie uh knuckles on it and everything um this is the instruction manual this is actually a book so let me just see if I can just flip a couple pages for you guys. So this is actually a book. And, um, you know, it shows the history of it. But I can't read it. <laughs> I can't read it. So, um, I mean, the roof is exceptionally detailed. Um, I'll be making a separate video for this. Um, it's a little bit of a pain to take this out of the, out of the case. Um, but these weren't cheap when they first came out. I got this one for... Oof, a good deal. Great deal. Oh, and then I also bought some Canon Company radiator screens for the Jeep 40-2 or SD 40-2. These are post 1976. I bought all of them because I got a custom project going on. Um what else? Besides the trains, I've been getting into excuse me, my video games. Finally got myself a PS Vita. And I'm really pleased about that. Um, I'm glad I, I I'm glad I got this. I actually got the uh, controller, whatever it is. I forget what that exterior feature is called, but um, that's really cool. And then this is the first Vita game I got. I like Sword Art Online. I don't care what anybody else says. Sword Art Online, one of the best animes I've ever seen, and I had to get the game for it. Still haven't played it yet. It's in there, but I will be playing it probably tonight. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. I also bought a whole bunch of DVDs. Um, let's just start with the trains. This is from Harrisburg to Suburban Station in Philadelphia. This is a cab ride. Now, you're probably saying, oh, it's a SEPTA. But no, it's not SEPTA. It's Amtrak. This is an Amtrak train that comes from Harrisburg, or that came from Harrisburg, and went all the way to... 30th Street Station, or Suburban Station, on the upper level. I fell asleep on this tape when my dad finished watching it. Now, he did tell me one thing. He said that when they made this tape, and they were coming into 30th Street, they actually clipped that part out of 30th Street, and they just skipped to entering Suburban Station. I don't know. I mean, my, I mean, my dad finished the video, so I had to see for myself, but I hope they didn't do that. And then this is a video on the North Shore mining. I believe they, I think they have, um, I'm pretty sure they have SD28s. 
either SD28s or SD38s. I'm not sure. I had to double check the roster, but I had to get that tape. Still haven't watched that. And this is tracking the Silver Liners, Volume 2. There's Silver Liner. There's a Silver Liner uh, 2 right there, number 239. So I tried to find Part 1, but I couldn't find Part 1, so I just got Part 2. And you guys obviously know who this is. I don't even need to show the name in detail. You guys know who this is. Um, like probably one of the, if not like the pioneer of model railroading of his time. And unfortunately, his he, his layout was destroyed in a, in a fire, I believe. Very few pieces of equipment survived. I have several of the old magazines with his layout. And you would think that the stuff that he did was done today. Um, great guy, great layout. I'm going to watch that. Um, so moving on. Oh, yeah, one more train. Uh, this is uh, from Pentrex. Tracks across Arizona. It's got the Apache Railway. Uh, Grand Canyon Railway. I'm not sure what the Central Railroad is, but the Black Mesa and Lake Powell Railroad is in here. So you get to see the E60s that they have running on here, which is nice. And you guys know I like Japanese anime. Huge Japanese anime fan. Gotta get my Japanese anime. Um, this is Black Bullet. I really hope they make a season two of this because it's really good. Um... I like it. They did the, the English dub was really good. I like it. Uh, the only thing is, they in the English dub version they curse a lot. In the English dub version, that was one part I don't like. But other than that, it was a good anime. And then this is Cross Angie. Now this is the Japanese import version. This is not the Blu-ray DVD version that's going to be coming out soon um, with English dubs. Um, I got the Japanese version because I like the Japanese language and I like how they talk and how they make things sound funny. Not saying that the English dubs aren't, um, but I just couldn't wait for the Blu-ray to come out, which is not even out yet. It'll come out in November and I'm not waiting for that. So <clears throat> then moving on, I got Warcraft. Still haven't seen it. I only seen parts of it like on commercials and stuff. So I'm gonna watch that. And then I got X Men Apocalypse, which is really good. I like it. Um, got the Jungle Book, saw parts of it, really good movie, but I don't, I, you know, really good movie, and I could see why they wouldn't recommend it for kids, but it's still a good movie. And then this is Harmony, this is an anime that was just recently released. Now I have the, um, Japanese version on my computer. Um, if you guys saw Guilty Crown, this is the same artist that did Guilty Crown, um, same artist, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so I got that. And then this is... Memo Ori... Ori... Mari? I hope I'm pronouncing that right. It's a pretty funny anime. Um, it's basically about this kid that has these abilities as a demon slayer and then all these other beings around him are like uh, spirits and ghosts and demons, so... They're trying to protect him. It's really funny. Hope they make a season two of that. And then this is a uh, hyperdimension Nefatuna, I think it's called. Really, I I never watched this anime. I just thought that you know, with the graphics and everything, I thought it'd be cool. It's got like a mecha kind of feel to it. Kind of reminded me of uh, Infinite Stratos. Kind of reminded me of that. So that's why I bought it. Still haven't watched it yet. And then Gate, uh, Season 1 and Season 2, which is really good. Highly recommend getting it if you're able to. I heard they were making, well, I think they're making a Season 3. I think they're making. If they're not, they should. Um, but it's a really, really great anime. Graphics, the plot, the storyline. It's basically about how this dimension between two parallel Earths opens. And there's like battles and stuff like that. I mean, if you guys know, you know, then you know what I'm talking about, but it's really, really good. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I mean, that's pretty much it so far, guys. I'll probably be getting more stuff in. Well, as I said, I got those other TGV cars coming in. Um, so I'm waiting for those to come in. And once those are in, I'll show you the set with the extra cars. 
So you guys be cool. God bless, and I'll see you later. Bye, guys.